IHGN Studios, it's Braves Beat. Hello Braves, it's been another amazing week on the health. I'm Dylan Condor. And I'm Isaac Fiore with this week's news update. Did you hear about the new flex rules? <laughs> no. What? Well, Marina Anderson went out to see what all this new flex stuff is about. Marina? So what is all this mystery around the flex block on Thursdays? Well, I had a chance to interview Mr. Domadeo, teachers, and a few students about this topic to uncover this mystery and get the facts. So what is the history of FLEX? So FLEX stands for Flexible Learning Environment. It started in 2015 and really it started as a student uh, body request, knowing that about 94% of all of our students are involved in something after school. So that's athletics, the arts, theater, clubs where they're working. Uh, oftentimes those activities keep you out of the building and out of home till late at night. And with the rigors of your schedule, students were looking for ways to incorporate some work time um, and really some connection time into the day. And so that's kind of how Flex was born. That's interesting, Mr. Domadeo. So what is the value of Flex? Flex is a great opportunity for students to come and see me as the teacher. Sometimes they request to see me or I can request them, but I enjoy the opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one with the student or work in small groups with a group of students to get caught up on any missed work, um, to get help on new concepts, or just to clarify and get some extra practice on a skill we've done in class. In college, one of the best things is office hours with your professor. Mm -hmm. And it's a time for you to go and meet with your professor one-on-one -on -one and just kind of go over whatever it is that you don't understand. That's what Flex is. So please, don't, we, we want this time to, to meet with you. So please, <laughs> come on in. Flex is God's gift to humanity. It allows you to catch up on things you've missed. You have interactions with your teacher. God bless Flex, go Flex, yay Flex. Everybody benefits when they don't have to come after school or before school to make up a missing quiz. With regard to the Flex period, as a teacher, it gives me an opportunity to work with students one-on-one -on -one who need some extra help. So it's great that we have that opportunity to bring students in. Um, flex time, I think, gets more and more important as like the quarter goes on. Uh, if you get behind in any of your classes, uh, it's extremely important to like meet with your teachers and like talk to them, and like they really appreciate you making the like incentive to come talk to them. All right, um, I'd say the biggest way I utilize my flex time is to get like more instructional time from my teachers, especially like one-on-one -on -one time. That's really helpful when you're not understanding what's going on in class. I would say just sit down, put in your AirPods, and get to work, and make sure you stay focused because you can get a lot done. Well, I think my freshman year when I was trying to get adjusted to the rigorous class schedules, I would always request to go and see Mrs. Schertz. Shout out Mrs. Schertz and Mr. Rieger. Now on a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you like Flex? It's a 10 out of 10 for me. A 10 out of 10. Awesome, so here are the new guidelines that we should follow. Remember, always report to your flex room first. Have a seat and wait for attendance. This should only take around three to five minutes before you can get back to what you were doing. Your teacher will check the spreadsheet and let you know if you've been requested. If you're not requested on the spreadsheet, you will not be released. And if you think you should have been requested, give your teacher a few minutes to reach out to the other teacher in order for them to request you on the spreadsheet. And wherever you are, first half is also where you have to stay second half unless a teacher has requested you specifically for the second half. A bell will ring to let you know when it's time to move to the second half. Well, now we all know why we have a flex block and our student responsibilities within them. We encourage you guys all to embrace these new guidelines so that we may continue to enjoy this special block of time for our students. After all, you asked for it. Well, that's music to my ears. Music to your what? It, wait, it's, a seg it? it's a segue. Senior student musician Jesse Chan was selected as a member of the 2021 National Association for Music Education All Concert Band. She is one of the four oboe Met players nationally to be selected. Congratulations, Jesse. No, wait. There is more music to talk about? Isaac? Well, thanks for the reminder. Ah, I needed that. The Bands of America competition was held in Indianapolis this past weekend. The Indian Hill Braves Marching Band finished fourth in the finals competition. Outstanding achievement this season, BMB. Now it's time for this week's Student Spotlight with Reese Tuttle. Roll the clip. Hello Braves and welcome to another episode of Student Spotlight. I'm your host, Reese Tuttle, and today we have... Hunter Gillen. So Hunter, tell us why you're here today. 
Well, I was dragged here by Hayden Wentz because I'm a Taekwondo instructor. Well, number one, I'm not surprised Hayden dragged you here, but I'm quite happy he did because I'm really interested about Taekwondo. So exactly, like, how did you get into doing Taekwondo in the first place? Well, uh, I sucked at sports as a child, uh, so Taekwondo ended up being the only thing that I really tried out and enjoyed, uh, and I've been teaching it, or uh, learning it at least, for 11 years since then, so clearly something wow. stuck. So about how many students do you teach, and where do you teach at? Well, I'm personally responsible for anywhere between 50 to 100 students, depending on the season, wow and uh, just the usual attendance rate. Mm -hmm. This center where I uh, work at, the Cincinnati Taekwondo Center, uh, has anywhere between 1,200 to 1,600 students, depending on same factors. That's crazy. So I assume you have a high rank or a black belt or something in the school. Yeah, I'm a third degree black belt at the center. I uh, wow. got my first degree when I was 11, and then my second degree when I was 14, and then the third degree just a couple months ago. That is crazy. Well, Hunter, I'm really happy that Hayden dragged you down here because I'm thrilled that I got to talk to you. And yeah, thank you for talking to me. Of course. Back to you at the desk. Our students really are some martial masters. Speaking of sports, here's Hayden Wentz and Abe Hayes, better known as Hayden, Hayden. with this week's sports report. Hayden. Hayden. Thank you, Isaac and Hayden. Now let's get right into it. We had a huge day on Wednesday for our college signings with Will Adair coming to play lacrosse at Cleveland State Annie Isfordin committing to play soccer at Johns Hopkins, Ella Riggs committing to play basketball at Furman, and Elizabeth Whaley committing to run track and cross country at Wake Forest. We also were able to grab some footage from the signing day. Roll the clip. Wow, great job, Braves. Now let's get into some CHL awards from the fall seasons. Football had a ton of honors this season, with our dogmen rounding out the first team with Joseph David, Robbie Gutman, Antoine Peake, and Garrett Riley Jefferson McClung. The second team with Luke Folke, Cooper Weiler, Will Adair, and John Potagil. Honorable mentions go to James Vollmer, Daniel O'Brien, Chase Lanham, and Eli Riggs. Wow, that was a lot. Golf supplied the CHL first team with Peter Shakley, Wyatt Higgins, and Alex Holzoffel. The second team with Ilkin Grow, an honorable mention to Kyle Ennis. Good deal, boys. And finally, wrapping up this week, our cheerleaders will head to Deer Park on Saturday in the CHL Cheer Competition. Good luck, ladies. That's all we have for sports this week, but tune in next week as we cover our first week of winter sports. Back to you all at the news desk. Thanks, dudes. Certainly was a successful fall season for our athletes. When an unexpected crisis hits district families, many people want to help in some way. The Braves Helping Braves, BHB Fund is set up to help you help others. Crisis can happen at any time. Your donation to the Braves Helping Braves Fund can ease the way for our district neighbors. Click on the link in the description to learn more. Indian Hill High School student athlete Annie Isverding was selected for the All-American Game. Isverding is one of the 43 elite players selected from across the country to participate in an event taking place in Knoxville, Tennessee. Participants will arrive on Thursday, December 9th and take part in team training and team activities. Congratulations, Annie, for being selected. Go Braves! Yesterday, November 11th, was Veterans Day, and we all participated in a letter-writing activity during Flex. Gino Cardosi met with Mr. Rieger to learn more about the special day. Hold the clip. All right, hello, Braves. Uh, today I'm here with Mr. Rieger to do just a short blit about Veterans Day. So, Mr. Rieger, what is Veterans Day? Uh, Veterans Day originally began as Armistice Day. Uh, it was a day, a federal holiday, to acknowledge the end of World War I, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, November 11th. Then in the 1950s, I think it was around 1958, under President Eisenhower, it was moved from Armistice Day to Veterans Day because, of course, by then the U.S. had fought in World War II and the Korean War. So it's a day not just to remember the fallen American dead from World War I, but to honor all Americans who have served, not just in war, but also in times of peace. Hmm. All right, thank you very much. I believe that's all we got. So all right. back to you at the news desk. Thanks, Gino, Mr. Rieger. Well, as we plan ahead for next week, Wednesday, November 17th is our first early release day for COVID shots. November is a big month for us, Braves. As you can see here, we are packed with exciting events and courageous conversations. I hope to see you all there. One more very important schedule change. Next Wednesday, November 17th, and Tuesday, November 23rd are early release days. Students can take advantage of the COVID vaccination optional made available by our school district. Details were sent to your parents earlier.
Yes, and the schedule on Wednesday will be a shortened seven period day. You will be released at 11.25 a.m. The schedule for the next week has been changed as well. Monday and Tuesday are like our normal schedule, and Wednesday is early release day. And the block days are moved to Thursday and Friday. Ooh, that was a lot of news this week. I did great for my first time. You're strong, but I am stronger, twerp. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, and email us with any school updates. And remember, stay classy, Indian Hill. In honor of Halloween being over, today we are going to be exploding pumpkins. This is a warning, do not try this at home. Wait, 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 have we done a test run? No, no. I'm just like putting it in like a different container and blowing up a bag or something. Why like do you want to do that? I think we should. This is the worst idea they've ever had. Not by the head, not by the Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was anticlimactic. Like, like... Run it back! Griffin! You need to cap! You know it's the gas that makes it go boom. Harry, I trust. Okay, so who's driving the Kroger? I'm trying to show a video of you guys watching directions. We have to learn. <laughs> oh my god, stop. Get out of there. Ouch! Not to me. Take seven. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> get out of there. Harry, get out of there. <laughs> oh, it started bubbling. <laughs> oh. Do not try this at home.